Hi guys, it's Toddy here from Recombi, and we have just got our hands on the new HTC U11, which has just been unveiled by the company. And we thought we'd put it alongside Samsung's Galaxy S8 just to see how the two phones compare, what the similarities are, and what the differences are. So obviously the most, the most prominent thing is, of course, the screens. In the case of the U11, we have a 16 by 9, 5.5 inch Quad HD Super LCD 5, and it is an absolutely stunning panel. HTC off, um, generally does the best LCD panels out there. Meanwhile, Samsung has opted for its Quad HD Plus 5.8 inch, but 18.5 by nine aspect ratio um, Super AMOLED display, which has a 2960 by 1440 resolution. So because of that taller aspect ratio, it has more pixels height wise, but it actually has a smaller footprint overall, actually, if I put the phones on top of each other. Um, in almost every dimension, the uh, S8, despite packing that larger, taller screen, um, actually is smaller than the uh, U11 on all sides. Um, aside from that, both phones actually have a lot of similarities. So on the front, we have a fingerprint sensor down the bottom beneath the display on the uh, U11, which is really, really fast, really great. Um, in doing this screen uh, maneuver on Samsung's part, the company actually had to move their fingerprint sensor around to the back, which is a little less convenient, um, but it is still a very responsive fingerprint sensor. And also, Samsung throws in iris and um, face recognition technology, iris scanning and face recognition for logging in to the phone. So you do have extra options with the Samsung there. Um, as for the cameras up top, the Galaxy S8 is rocking an 8 megapixel front facing camera. It's a very good camera, particularly in low light. It features an f1.7 aperture. Meanwhile, the HTC U11 features a whopping 16 megapixel sensor with a 150 degree wide angle lens and an f2.0 aperture. So the S8 might fare better in lower light, but you'll get a higher resolution picture and you might be able to squeeze more people in in your selfies or group selfies with the U11. Now, jumping around to the back, both phones feature 12 megapixel primary snappers. In the case of the uh, U11 there, it's the company's new Ultra Pixel 3 sensor. Um, it features a shutter time of 0.3 seconds, f1.7 aperture, um, 1.4 micron pixels. So it is a really solid performer. And if it's anything like the HTC 10, it should be a really good all round camera. Of course, you get 4K video recording. There's OAS and EIS, and there's a dual LED flash there as well. On the S8, we have a similarly spec 12 megapixel camera. It also has OAS and EIS, F1.7 aperture, really large pixels, great low light performance, arguably the best in the business right now until we test out the HTC U11, um, and a single LED flash, which mm, is not a big deal. The actual picture quality that it produces is pretty solid but that is something to bear in mind. You'll also notice that both these phones have pillowed glass on the front and the back, if I can get back into the uh, S8 there. Um, so they both look great, but they are absolute fingerprint magnets. In the case of the U11, it's actually Gorilla Glass 5, uh, skirted by a metal frame on all sides, just like the S8. Um, and the S8 comes in, I believe it's three colors right now, whilst the uh, U11 will feature all the same colors as the, U, um, the other U phones that launched earlier this year. So you'll get the brilliant... Um, black, which is this one here. You get the ice white, I believe it's called, and you also get the uh, sapphire blue. Um, and then you also will have two new colors, I believe it's called um, Arctic Silver, which is almost like a light blue sheen, and then Solar Red, which is a particularly arresting color that looks kind of pinky red head on, and if you tilt the phone downwards like this, it becomes more of like a yellow. It's designed to simulate a sunset. Um, Software-wise, both phones are running Android 7.1, so they both come with the Google Assistant built in. Um, Samsung has opted for Bixby as well, which is its own kind of assistant. It aggregates all the kind of news, everything you want, and in the future it has um, Bixby Vision, which lets you scan and find out information on objects and places, but it'll also have a voice element where you can do basically anything you can with touch on this phone with your voice. HTC is combating that with a uh, few things. HTC Sense Companion is like the, uh, the AI part. It bases, bases its information on your appointments, on your habits, and it'll suggest things that might be useful to you as you use the U11 and the longer you use it, the smarter it becomes. Um, but the phone also features four microphones, which are always on, and they tie into both the Google Assistant and this phone will also support Alexa just after launch. It's actually gonna be the first one that has that always on voice integration built into it for Alexa. So you can summon either voice assistant and the company says that come actual launch day, it will also announce a third voice assistant that you can tie in as well. So let's assume it's something like Cortana and we'll confirm that nearer the time. You'll actually be able to use multiple voice assistants out the box or at least very soon after launch, um, leveraging the extra hardware on offer inside the U11. Uh, another thing to mention is audio capabilities. In the case of the, uh, the Galaxy S8, you do get a headphone jack, which is down the bottom here. 
and on one side of the USB-C port. And then on the other side, you'll notice there's a single downward facing loudspeaker and it's perfectly fine for everyday use. But obviously HTC is the king of uh, loudspeakers, I guess you could call it. They have excellent, their boom sound um, technology has proved excellent time and again, and the boom sound hi-fi hi -fi edition used in the U11 is particularly special because it actually uses the whole body of the phone as an acoustic chamber to push out a greater range of sound. So you do, should get superior audio with highs coming out the top and uh, bass coming out the bottom there as well. Both phones also offer some level of water resistance. So you get IP68 certification, which is I believe uh, 1.4, 1.5 meters um, of water for up to half an hour fresh water for the SA and IP67, which is almost as good, I believe it's one meter for the same amount of time. So either way, you can take these out in the rain. Um, the other unique thing, we talked about the screen on the S8, but the unique thing for the U11 is it has a new feature called Edge Sense, which basically lets you squeeze the bottom of the phone and you can do, you can do things like see us, quick launch the camera, or I can long press there and I can jump to the rear camera and if I do a quick squeeze, I can then take a photo and that's all without touching the screen. There isn't really anything like this on the S8 right now, so it's a really impressive and distinctive feature that HTC has been working on for a little while. And the last thing to talk about is performance and battery life. So whilst the, uh, Exynos 8895, backed up by four gigabytes of RAM. Inside the S8 is a very good chipset, and we have seen that time and again with all of the things we've tested it with. There's gonna be a Snapdragon 835, whichever market you're in, um, with the U11, also backed up by four gigabytes of RAM. Both phones also come with 64 gigabytes of storage, micro SD expandability, but the U11 will top out at uh, two terabyte support, whilst the S8 will feature up to 256 gigabytes. Um, and in some markets, the U11 will also come with six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. Now, the last thing to talk about is battery, as I just mentioned. Both phones also pack a 3,000 million power battery. In the case of the Samsung, that comes with uh, fast charging, Samsung's own adaptive fast charging, which is pretty good, whilst the 835 chipset means that you can get um, Qualcomm's quick charge technology. In the case of the U11, that is quick charge 3.0, uh, which should be pretty good. The 3000 milliamp hour battery also is said to be more efficient. So we're hoping up to two days of use. Um, if we're lucky, the S8 tops out right now at about a day and a half of use between charges. So that is everything we can tell you right now about both the Samsung Galaxy S8 and how it stacks up against the new HTC U11. If you have any questions about either of these phones, just drop us a line down below in the comments. You can find out more on recombo.com mobile. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.